Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments for Israel. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord God, am a jealous God, visiting iniquities upon the children, upon the third and the fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in the sixth day the Lord made the heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, and rested. And the Sabbath day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God give thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his man servant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor. The Lord God Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Yes, sir. Be good. Heard all the syllables. Right. Testing, testing. Go, go, go. Yes, sir. First and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel, which is Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I'm going to give you the title of the message. Uh, the title of the message is, Do Not Commit Mental Suicide. Do not commit mental suicide. Everybody knows what suicide means when you kill yourself, but it's a mental suicide that is going on today in this world. And the reason why I say it's mental, because before somebody he killed themselves, they got to think about it. They got to ponder on it. They got some people go through serious <coughs> depression, serious loneliness. They ain't getting much love. They don't have any friends. All these things are a factor in committing suicide. But I just want to focus on the mental part of this suicide because the mental part is where the game or the war is in your mind. It's right there. And Satan plays a very big role in helping you kill your mind mentally. And that's why I tie the lesson mental suicide because you got to make sure you give your brain some weapons to fight with. Because I know y'all notice in the world today how people are really just depressed. Whether it be lack of money, whether it be lack of time, whether it be lack of entertainment, anything that's lacking from them, they go on a serious depression mode. But as believers, we got to understand that our mind needs to be equipped with the Word of God. If it's not equipped with the Word of God, you will hurt yourself or hurt somebody else. Mm -hmm. And you got to make sure that God is the one that ordering your steps in the way you should walk in this world. Because we're living in some very, very trying times. Very trying. Very trying. And it can happen to anybody. Depression. I mean, it can happen to anybody who just down. So this lesson you put together so 
you won't commit mental suicide, meaning that it won't start up here. You got to equip yourself with these scriptures so it can help you. So God can help you when Satan comes and steal whatever he puts in your mind. Because he coming. So we're going to get to this lesson. We're going to turn to Isaiah chapter 24. We're going to start with verse 1. Because what's going on in this, in this world, God already prophesied it's going to happen. And the reason why people are committing mental suicide because their minds are not equipped with the word of God and they don't think that this stuff is going to happen. He's the one causing all the terror. He's the one causing all the sickness. He's the one causing all the killing. He's the one causing people to suicide, commit suicide. God is the one. And I'm going to show you that. Like I said, the title of the message, Do Not Commit Mental Suicide. We're going to turn to Isaiah chapter 24. We're going to start with verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, maketh it waste, and turneth it upside down, scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. See, why do you think people are running left and right? You got race wars. You got black against white. You got Democrats against the Republican, against the Republican. You got all this stuff going on because God is mustering all of this up. He is making the earth go upside down because his book got to be fulfilled. Go ahead. And it, and it shall be as with the people, so with the priests. So it's going to be with the people, just with the preacher. Everybody's going to have to go through this. Go ahead. As with the servant, so with his master. Yes, sir. As with the maid, so with her mistress. Yes, sir. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. God is not leaving nobody out from this destruction that's going to hit this world. Everybody's going to feel the pain of it. Go ahead. The land shall be ultimately empty yes, and ultimately spoiled. For the Lord has spoken this word. This is a future prophecy. He said this land is going to be ultimately <coughs> empty. And who's causing this? The Lord. It got to come to pass. So that's why people need to get their mind strong. You can't have a weak mind when you're going into this part of the world because we're at the end. Mm -hmm. The Bible said the last day, men and hearts will fail them. Heart is another, is another name for mind. It's going to fail them because of what? They haven't read about this time. If you read about the time before it comes, you can kind of get comfort. But if you never go to the book and read about it, you are even more happy, happy, go, go, joy, joy, joy time. Forget that. You can have a little peace every once in a while, but this world is not going to give it to you. It's not. So mentally, you got to be prepared. And that's what my job is to show you what's about to come in the future. Go ahead. Verse 4. The earth moaneth and fadeth away. The world languishes and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. Language means suffering. The earth is fading away. Can't y'all tell? That's why they're producing so much generic food because they don't pump so much fertilizer in the soil of the earth where the earth can't even produce the food, that good food that we need. Mm. It's perishing, it's fading away. And the people along with it. There's so much killing, so much destruction. All this stuff coming to pass, and people are not paying any attention to the Bible. If you pay attention to the Bible, you say, oh, I've been waiting on that. Oh, I understand that. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you're like, man, when are it going to get better? we get Trump out of office. we talk about Trump, get put, put Biden, and maybe he'll do us better. All that, man, them, them men ain't going to do what God told them to do which is turning this world upside down. Because God is causing all this. Then he said the Lord make the earth go turn it upside down. He's doing this. Stop putting your focus on the man. It's God doing this. Go ahead. Verse 5. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the law, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. So is it about the white man? So is it about Trump man? Mm -hmm. So is it about Obama man, Biden man? If it's about them, no. It's about, it's, about, it's about people transgressing the law. 
Mm -hmm. Putting his focus on the man. Stop this. Read your book. You understand? It's the Lord. Amen. You transgress against this law. Go ahead. Therefore has the curse devoured the earth. Wait a minute. The curse has devoured the earth? Why? Because they're breaking the law. Most people can't even remember the Ten Commandments. But they holler, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Then go back and eat a poor child sandwich. Come on, man. This is why the earth is in the state it is in now, because we break the law. You hear what I said? We. Because I have to repent too when I break it. But the world, if you don't study it, you won't know to repent. You just keep going on your merry yes. way. That's right. That's right, bro. Go ahead, brother. Therefore, has the curse divided the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. He's talking about Israel. Few men. It all centered around our people. Few men left. We killing ourselves more than the world killing ourselves. They go up, get in the uproar just because one white man kill a black man. We done had almost, what, <laughs> this month about 10 or 15 suicides, in, I mean, not murders in all of Somewhere around that family, a black man, black on black crime. Mm -hmm. Because what? Their mental, their minds are not on God's word. And they think they're attacking their brother. They're not attacking their brother. They're attacking Satan, but their brother is flesh and blood right there who they're dealing with, so they're taking that out on them. You gotta understand how this thing works. Go ahead. The new wine morning, the vine languages. Yes, sir. All the merry hearted do sign. Everybody sign right now. Go ahead. The mirth of, of Tabor ceases, the noise of them that rejoice in it, the joy of the heart ceases. There's no joy right now in this land. It ceases. Why? Because if we transgress the law, the minds are not right. Go ahead. Verse 9. They shall not drink wine with the song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. Go ahead. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. And there's and it's confusion in this land. People shut their houses. Don't, don't even want to come out the house. Because they feel like something's going to happen. Go ahead. There is a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. It ain't it dark in the streets right now? Meaning a whole lot of stressful pain, agony, defeat, depression. All this stuff is in the street right now. Go ahead. In the city is left desolation and the gate is smitten with destruction. This is the time we're living in right now. And this is why people are killing themselves. This is why people are depressed. This is why people are just down. Because these things got to happen. If you understand these things happen, you won't be down so much. You're like, okay, I just got to deal with it. You just got to deal with it. You got to deal with ups and downs in your life. You finish with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You got to protect our mind. If you don't know how to protect your mind, God will send Satan to you. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Do not commit mental suicide. Get your mind strong. Your mind got to be strong. Not just your body. Now you can't be in shape showing all your abs and you the small waist and all that. That mind is very important. Mm. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to start with verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And by the gathering together unto him. Go ahead. That ye be not soon shaken in mind mm -hmm. and in trouble, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. God don't want us to be shaken in mind. How do you be shaken in mind? When you don't read and study. That this stuff's supposed to hit this land, it's supposed to be destruction from now on. It's not going to be peace no more. Don't even think about that. You just learn how to deal with this destruction. 
He said, I don't want you shaking in mind. I don't want you troubled because I wrote this to comfort you. Go ahead. Let no man deceive you by any means. Yes, sir. For that day shall not come except their fault, except their come of falling away first. Yes, sir. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. He said, don't let no man deceive you. It's going to be a great falling away from what? From God. And we hear now. He said, don't let no man deceive me. There ain't going to be no big crowd of people coming to church today. They're going to kind of zero that out. Even in the Sunday churches. They don't want to come to hear the truth. Mm. They don't want to come because the truth is too hard for them. It's too, it's too depressing. No, you need to understand how God ran it. Because we don't have a stone in the fight. We can't throw a stone at none of this. Mm. It's got to be fulfilled this way. And he said, to the man of sin be revealed. We know that is the man of sin is going to sit in the temple of God. We ain't hitting that lesson today, but keep going. Verse 4. Who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Yes, sir. Of that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. You know, that's our calling card. To go to the wilderness. Like I said, we ain't dealing with that lesson right now, but when the man is saying get in the temple of God, we know. Look for your transportation. Go ahead, brother. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. He told you right there. He looked, man. Paul said, remember. Remember this. I have told you. So you will be shaking your mind. So your mind won't get killed by God. Jump down to verse uh, 8. Let me show you something what I mean by that. Go ahead. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Yes, sir. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And we know that's the, the man of sin which is going to sit in the temple of God. But this is what the man of sin is going to bring. And he bringing it right now. Go ahead. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So Satan is coming after him with all signs of Lying inside of it. Wonders. Go ahead. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, mm -hmm. in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. You see what he said right now? Because if you don't receive the love of the truth, you won't be saved. The love of the truth is keeping the commandments. That's right, bro. Keeping them. Come on. If you don't receive that, if you don't love that, you cannot be saved. Amen. Period. But listen to what he said. Listen to what God said if you don't receive the love of the truth. Go ahead. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. He's going to send a strong delusion to the person who do not love his law. So they can believe a lie. Strong delusion telling you that Sunday to Saturday. Strong delusion saying that December 25th is Jesus' birthday. Strong delusion telling you that Good Friday when Jesus resurrected. Uh, died on, then he resurrected on Easter Sunday. That's a strong delusion. That's a lie. If you say that ain't working, look in your Sunday church. It's working. Mm. And who's sending it? Go ahead. Verse 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Ain't they having pleasure and unrighteousness and all this stuff? Eating pork, eating shrimp, going to church for Easter, Christmas, all this stuff they have in place, they have so much fun that it makes so much jealous. Why can't we have this fun? They have a pleasure in unrighteousness. If you look at that in that way, your mind is gone. Because you haven't received the love of the truth. You should look at it and say, them folk trying to kill me over there. I can't go over there. But we're not looking at it that way. You finish with that? Yes, sir. I want to make sure you understand that God said he was going to send this strong delusion. Not Satan. He is. Mm -hmm. You get Satan too much credit. God controls all of this. When he sent it to your mind, your mind will have su suicidal thoughts. Let's go to Mark chapter 4. Let's see how mental suicide starts. Where it comes from. Mark 4. These weapons to protect 
your mind just as well as my mind. This stuff we're going, it's going on today. Ain't nobody even talking about this depression, how we can get off of it. Well, we should have more to do. We should have party. We should take the, uh, uh, what they call it, quarantine off. All this stuff. That ain't going to do it. It ain't. Because these people's minds are jacked up in sin. Mark chapter 4 and 14. Let me show you something about how this suicidal mentality comes about. Verse 14, go ahead. The sower soweth the word. This is a parable about the sower. And the sower is talking about a believer or, the, or God who's sowing the word, who's giving you the truth. Go ahead. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard Satan cometh immediately, taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. This is how Satan get in your mind. He said, and these are they, talking about people, when the word is sown, if somebody tells you, reading like this brother reading the word of God, Satan coming immediately trying to take you off the thought of this lesson, or take you off the word of God. He coming because he don't want you to be saved. That's right. He said he come what? He meant to take away the word that was sown in their hearts. We ain't talking about this blood pump. We talking about your mind. That's right. Amen. He coming. Let's see how he coming to these people. Go ahead. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. Yes, sir. Who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. You know how people are when they hear the word of God and they hear the truth? And they know that what their mom would tell them all was a lie. They receive it with gladness. But when they go back and tell their parents, they're going to be chopped down the ones that they mostly respect. And they're not going to hear it. And this is the response of that person who don't get no root in them. You got to be strong in this word. Because if you don't get strong in this word, your parents or your loved one, whoever you value their opinion, they will take you from it. And that's how Satan uses them. But keep going. 17. And have no root in themselves. Mm -hmm. And so endure but for a time. Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. There that big word, immediately they are offended. Why don't nobody hear me? I'm reading out the Bible, the same Bible they reading in church. I'm telling them, but they still won't receive it. He told you this will happen. Did you get discouraged? And then the word of God, you leave. I ain't leaving the word of God because I can't tolerate the hell. I can't tolerate the lack of fire. Keep going. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. He given categories, stony ground, thorns. These are people when his word is sown to you, when his word is preached to you. This is how you respond to it. Keep going. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter it in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Oh, this is how it chokes the word out of you? This is how you, the word leaves you? The cares of the world. You think about riches. You think about the lust, lust of this world. I can't have this man. I can't have this woman. I should have five women. I should have five of them. I can have whoever I want. That's lust. Mm. Lust of this world. If you learn about a book, you know what you're supposed to be doing. Period. That's right. But the cares of this world choke the word of God. So if your mind is on this top, on this path, you mentally are committing suicide. Because ain't no right and wrong. Ain't no in between. So either with God or you die. Period. Go ahead. Yes. Did I put twenty on there? Go ahead, put twenty. Go ahead. And these are they which are sown on good ground. Yes, sir. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Some 30, 34, some 60, and some an hundred. This is the problem people don't understand. He's not just solely talking about money. Who you bringing to Christ? That's the fruit we looking at. Who you bringing? Who have you witnessed this to? You got all this word you pent up in you and you ain't bringing nobody to Christ. 
I got my fruit of my leg. This is who I can bring me. I invited all of y'all. Many more before y'all got here. I'm still working. Because I know God said, look, I'm looking at your work, your action. I give you much and I'm going to require much. But he tells them right here, he looking at good ground. He's trying to find people with some good ground. How many people you brought to him? It ain't just talking about money. How many people you led to Christ? I'm talking about the real Christ, the ones that keep the dietary law, Come the on. ones that keep the Sabbath, <laughs> the ones that keep the Passover. That's the real Christ. This other Jesus got all this paganism in his church. Mm. Mentally, we cannot commit suicide. You brain dead if you commit it. You feel me that? Yes, sir. Let's go to uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. Let me show you how God explains this heart. So you won't think he's talking about the blood pump. It's just a metaphor for our mind. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. You got to understand. You got to equip your mind to be strong. Because it's trying to kill you every day now. Mm -hmm. It's trying to kill you. Your own mind. Because you got a lot of people being led by their own thoughts. No, you can't be led by your own thoughts. You better check your thoughts out. Let me show you why. Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. Go ahead. The heart is deceitful above all things mm. and desperately wicked. Who can know it? What is he talking about? Your mind. Right. He said your mind is deceitful above all things. How absolute is all? Mm. He said desperately wicked. Who can tell? You can't even tell what you're going to do the next day. You'll say all day long, I ain't going to lust after this woman. You say all day, I ain't going to lust after this man. Tell that woman, a man, rob body, you lust him. Because mm. their mind is not equipped with nothing to fight it. You got to equip it with these scriptures. And most people look at this stuff and lust after it. Don't even repent. Take it into the grave with them. Verse 10, go ahead. I, the Lord, such is the heart. He says what? He such is the heart. So he's searching our mind to see where we at. You got a lot of fakers. <laughs> they will sit right up in here with us, praising the Lord, going to this, to all the holy day, to the Sabbath day, but their mind is elsewhere. But God says your mind. You can fake the funk with me all day long. I ain't got no heaven to hell to put you in. Mm -hmm. This God, he said, I'm searching your mind. To see what you are thinking. Don't fake it. Verse 10 again. Go ahead. I, the Lord, such is the heart. I try the rings, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. He gonna give it to you according to your mind. If you ain't, if you ain't giving many of your prayers met, it's something dealing with your mind. It's something dealing with but your mind ain't right. If you get what you need when you pray, okay, you doing what you're supposed to do. You can only tell you can only tell yourself that. How you living by your mind? Mm -hmm. You finish with that, yes, sir. Let's go to Luke chapter twelve. Let me show you a good example of a person who's mentally committing suicide and don't even know it. It's in the book. Delusional. But people say, man, suicide. I ain't trying to kill myself. Oh, really? Really? It's just a slow death. Because ultimately, when the resurrection comes, you're going to die and they're going to fight and you repent for them sins. Your mind ain't right. He said, I try the rings of your heart. Your mind. Luke chapter 12. We try to start with verse 16. Let me show you a good example of a person who's he's mentally committing suicide. Don't even know it. Until it was late. <laughs> Luke chapter 12, verse 16. Go ahead. And he spake a parable 
unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. So he's talking about the rich man.